This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something bothering you and giving you anxiety, preventing you from achieving your goals? When I got out of prison, I felt that way. BetterHelp will match you with a professional and help you with your specific situation. You could start communicating within 48 hours and it's worldwide. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done online. You can log in to your account and send messages to your therapist. You'll get a timely response and schedule all of your appointments, video or phone sessions, so you won't have to sit in a waiting room. You could change your therapist at any time, and it's very affordable. They even have financial aid. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life as of today. Go to BetterHelp dot com forward slash Sam and join over two million people who have taken charge of their mental health. I got you ten percent off of the first month. Go to betterhelp dot com slash Sammy and it's help, not health. H E L P. Adios. Mm. Bye bye. Hey guys, got a ton of questions about Frankie Lucasio just passed away. So many different questions. I'm going to tell you a little story about him and then I'm going to answer some of the questions. Frankie Lucasio, first of all, was never the underboss of the family and he was never the Gonzia official. He was a captain. After we took over, Frankie DeChico died. Me and John brought in Joe Piney to become the official underboss to calm the old timers and everybody down. And me and John were running the family. When Joe Piney and Joe Gallo went away, I had become the concierge of the family. We made Frankie Lucasio, the acting underboss, to see who we would put there. But he was still only a captain. Great guy, but stand up guy. When we went to prison in 1990, me, John, and Frankie Lucasio, there's many, many stories, tapes, all kinds of stuff to what I'm saying. Frankie Lucasio hated. John Gotti. Talked to me about killing him. I had agreed. In 1991, after doing 11 months, I cooperated. I flipped. I walked away. I was surprised that Frankie didn't. There's a story. Jerry Capisi did an article once with F. Lee Bailey. F. Lee Bailey and me didn't get along. I didn't like him, he didn't like me. But he did an interview with Jerry Capisi. When our lawyers were taken off of the case, he came in to represent John and us. He looked at the case and he told John, you can't beat the case. You're on tape, you're clear as a bell, you're finished. You have to take a plea. John told him, no, I got a secret weapon. F. Lee Bailey told him what kind of secret weapon. I'm going to throw Sammy the Bull and Frankie Lacasio under, under the bus and I'm going to go free. He left. F. Lee Bailey. and never came back. He told Jerry Capisi in his article that I wanted nothing to do with the case, what, what he was going to do. So this is backed up, and this is done not too long ago. This is, he just died. This is done months ago. And there's all kinds of factual information about this. 
So somebody said, well, why did you put him in jail? I didn't put him in jail. I cooperated. I walked away. It was up to him to do what he wanted to do. If he wanted to stay there and fight the case, after hearing that and hating him, that's his decision. When they got convicted, he told the judge, everybody should be like John Gotti. And he hated the guy. Why he said that, nobody understood it. The reason I think it was his son was made and he was afraid that his son would be killed. At the trial, when I testified, John got his lawyers, all of the lawyers, said, as Sammy is supposed to be asked the question, is Frankie Lucasio involved in this murder? I would have said no. And John Gotti knew it. Now, here's his theory. I say no. I wrecked the case for the government against him. I don't look like a government puppet. The jurors believe me, and no matter what he says against me, will stick. Now, it makes sense, but still, you're giving up your brother. He gave him up. At that point, he knew what happened. I'm surprised he still didn't flip. But again, it's his choice. I fought for him for four years. S wrote declarations, made these statements about him not being involved. But the government being the government, they never gave him a break. Maybe it was that remark that he did in court. A lot of the lawyers told me, Sammy, that was the dumbest remark he could have made. Especially that the lawyers knew that he did hate John. But that re remark about everybody should be like John Gotti, I think that stuck with the judges and the system. And he died in prison. I fought for him for four years. I wrote things about him and his family. I got messages back from his family. So a lot of you guys who send me these messages, you're a little confused on what happened and who sent him to prison. The government is their job to send us, we're bad guys, to prison. Don't be mad at them. Me, it's my job to get understand and tell the truth when I cooperated. And I told the government that's exactly what I would do. They knew what I would do. But I'm going to give you something that you don't know. They told me, Sammy, just tell the truth. If, if, if he beats the case because of what you say and do, don't worry about it. Okay, good. But it was John who stopped those questions from being asked in court. And that's a fact. Not only that, after John died, he appealed the case stating what John did. Lawyers came in and told the, stu the story. But it was too late. He couldn't win on that. Another question that was asked is, how could he stop the lawyers from asking the question? I think most of you guys could understand how John Gotti told Frankie Lacasio's lawyer, if you ask Sammy that question, I'll kill you. And John, all he had to do was reach out to the street. He's a boss. The lawyer didn't ask the question. The lawyer was asked in an appeal if that happened. And the lawyer told him it was true. It did happen. John threatened him. But Frankie couldn't win an appeal if he stood on his head. And that happens in the criminal system. A lot of people don't understand. It's real easy to get in. It's extremely hard to get out. He waited too long with these appeals. I'm going to tell you another part of this story with Frankie. I wrote a book in 1996, years after I got out. 
the story with the oranges and John and all of these things, John believed the book 100%. He put out a contract while he was in prison on Frankie Lucasio, Joe Watts, and Danny Marino. He went to the ABs to pay them to kill these people. The prison found out. They found out because two of the ABs he was dealing with, bribing and giving money to, cooperated with the government against him. They put Frankie Lucasio in protective custody. The other guys were on the street. So that's John Gotti. That's what he did. That's what he did to me, to Frankie Lucasio. So he gets jammed up again. He had cancer at that point. The government didn't go with the case. They went in the case. It was an AB case. They went against a bunch of guys. They put him down as an unindicted co-conspirator. So he was, it, it was useless. He was dying. Or he would have went to, got another life sentence on top. So this started off with uh, Frankie Lacasio's story. Again, he was never the underboss and he was never the gunzia. But he earned the title of the acting positions, both positions, he was respected, he stood up. To me, anybody who does that amount of time, don't flip, I give him kudos. I think it was a mistake. And I thought after years in there, I did get one or two messages from him. I think he thought it was a mistake as well. When somebody's, I don't agree with cooperating, but when somebody's double crossing you and triple crossing you and doing all these negative things about you, you gotta do something. Or just lay down and die like he did. I'm gonna tell you how much Another story came to me after I cooperated. The agent, agents talked to me about it. John Gotti had a friend or somebody, I think his son sent him my book when I wrote a book, and a friend, and he yells at his friend, I think it's his friend or his son. He yelled at somebody, I told you to get me the fucking book, and you didn't get it to me right away. The other guy did. Maybe the son gave him the book faster than the other guy. And he was bad mounting him. The guy says, well, I, I read the book. He's fucking full of shit. He's a rat. John got his words. The agents told me. They said, Sammy, this is incredible. John Gotti answered the guy on a phone, which they're listening to you in prisons. He may be a lot of things, but he's not a liar. <laughs> what a thing. I wish I had that tape. I wish I had that tape to play. The guy was doing a life sentence, reads my book, and believed every word. Knew that what Frankie and he knew it was true because he lived it. He knew about the oranges. He knew about how Frankie's attitude was. He knew it all. And he knew every word in that book was true. So that's a little story about Frankie Lacasio, and he has a little bit of a legend now. He was an honorable guy, always was. He threw his life away at one point. And I don't think everybody who does a life sentence should cooperate. But like I said, when you're screwed and tattooed, maybe it's time to fuck the oath fuck everything, and walk. I wish he did. At least he could have died at home with his family and friends, and he could have had a little bit of a life. And he could have st still walked with his chest out. Because he was stand up. What John did to him, <laughs> I think people understand it, just like they understand why I cooperated. All these years, all these cases, all these problems I ever had, I cooperated once with the John situation. 
I had a deal that two years I would cooperate, and that was it. I never cooperated against anybody again, and they've been begging me forever. I think that's one of the reasons why I got smashed with a 20-year sentence. Something I was facing five, six, seven, ten years the most. But when you go against the government, like I did in many, many cases, I testified for the defense against the government. When you fuck up, they're there to get some hunk, and they're going to take it. So maybe this answers some of your questions. And not only at the same time tells you how I thought about him. And one guy questioned me, how much could you have loved him? You testified. Well, I'm talking about it after he's dead. That's how much I love him. That's how much I respected him. I think he made a mistake in life. Those words he used in court, I don't think he would have died in prison. But then again, that's Monday quarterback, which I hate. Okay, now I had enough, bro. I hope you understand what happened. And I'm just going to say, take care.